A few weeks ago, we took the day off from building cars and we went to Buckinghamshire Railway Centre up near Aylesbury for their Easter Transport Festival. Buckinghamshire Railway Centre is based out of the old Quainton Road station, which goes back to 1868 and eventually became part of the London Midland region of British Rail and closed to passengers in 1966. The weird part of this site is the formerly active freight line which continued service after 1966 and bisects the station and sidings into two distinct sites. Although this line isn't active now because the line's been torn up further down to make way for HS2 coming through, it's still split into two despite there not being any traffic on it, although they are trying to connect the two sides properly so they'd be able to run trains further down the line. The Transport Festival, as its name suggests, is all about transport, so it's not just trains, or even cars for that matter. There are traction engines, motorbikes, and bicycles, including this really cool three-wheeler contraption that absolutely looks like something we'd make on the driveway. Cars were well represented though, with many examples on show. This MGB GT V8 in blaze orange and Triumph Spitfire flying the flag for British Leyland alongside this incredibly clean Ford Fiesta and Ford Escort, both definitely clean enough to eat your dinner off. Not quite as clean but still looking great, an original Humvee hiding two small World War II Jeeps behind its ample bodywork. The Jeeps were all decked out in kit which was great to see. And over by the museum, we found Laurie in his natural habitat surrounded by fire trucks, making his video of the day. The museum shed is pretty massive, and it's stuffed full of wagons, locos, and artefacts from all of railway history, including a train from the Underground Royal Mail line in London. While we were walking around the wagons in the shed, something looked oddly familiar. If you watch Taskmaster, you might recognise the shed from the ping pong ball transport task in Season 6. There was one other loco in the shed that caught our attention. This loco is from the Brill Tramway, and it's an 040, like so many of the other trains on this site. However, this one is chain-driven. Modified from a road-going traction engine, it has the boiler and drive system dropped into what can only be described as the most basic of wagon frames. There's no suspension of any sort, and it has a propensity to tip backwards and wheelie whilst pulling heavy loads dropping back down, damaging the tracks, and derailing and breaking the chain. Essentially, someone has engine-swapped this train. On the way back from the shed, we stopped by this really good-looking Vauxhall Victor, complete with a caravan wind deflector to improve the aerodynamics. Quite cool, but I'd be interested to know how much of an effect it actually had. On the day we went, there were two locos hauling passengers down the lines either side of the old freight line. The first train we went on had an open freight wagon and two closed coaches in its consist, and they made a couple of trips along the available line with each load of passengers. On the way down the line, passing by more of the railway centre stock, we went under a footbridge, also used in Taskmaster Season 6. At the end of the line we met another loco, another 040 tank engine, with three blood and custard passenger coaches. And what do you do when you have two locos side by side on a straight piece of track? You drag race, obviously. This probably wasn't the most fair of races. Our train in the green was far lighter than the other, but it was totally unique to see two trains running side by side giving everything they've got rather than flying by in a station. Being able to watch the running gear go as you powered along the line was an absolute delight. Thank <laughs> you. 
Back on the other side of the site, we looked at more of the show cars, including this mini-powered, highly streamlined kit car. It's registered as some kind of Westfield, but I'm not sure what it was because I can't actually remember a huge amount about it. The owner was chatting to a lot of people though, so if you do know, put something in the comments and educate us all. Further along, this Austin 7 looked unsurprisingly dwarfed by the Rolls-Royce sat beside it in all its splendour. The engine of the Rolls-Royce is a real gem, and I was quite surprised to see in the engine bay a complete spare set of spark plugs, for just in case, I guess. A far cry from the engine in the Austin 7, which looks almost pint-sized by comparison. Which I guess is quite apt, given the engine capacity of this four-cylinder isn't much more than a pint. Following another traction engine down the site, we went past this Gavioli fairground organ, which had been playing music all day, but not before we claimed one of Laurie's vehicles, Humpty, by way of a pedal box sticker whilst he wasn't looking. You'll notice particular features I really like are the concrete that holds together the inside of the bucket thing. Yeah, concrete is very important, you know. As to round out the day, we hopped on the other train on site, Waleswood, and went down the line while Laurie was on the green engine on the other track. Time for another race. The Box Railway Centre is a really good day out, especially when they have multiple trains running simultaneously. It really is a unique point of view being able to look at another train running alongside you. It's not one that you get to see very often. It was also nice to take a quick step away from some of the projects and actually have a day off, although there's still a lot of work to do. And if you haven't already, you should subscribe to the channel so you'll see all of the videos that we do on all of our projects and our road trips to various places when they come out. Hit the bell and you'll be notified exactly when they come out so you can pick them up as soon as possible. Check out shop.pedalbox.show if you'd like to buy any of the Pedalbox merch, including hats and t-shirts. And if you'd like to support us directly, go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow and help support the builds on the channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.